Thank you very much, Mary Kay. So, uh, guys, you should be able to see my screen uh, in a second. There we go. Oh, so there's a, a quick question while you're doing that. Ed. There's a quick question. Oh, excellent. In my opinion, how many figures would be appropriate <laughs> for a page? I just lost it because um, how many figures would be appropriate on a page? Um, so I would say I love to read proposals that have roughly a figure per page. I think it breaks up the page. It makes it look aesthetically pleasing. But honestly, that's kind of hard to do. Like sometimes it's hard to come up with a figure per page. The background and significance, you should probably have no problem with that. But once you get into like the approach, um, it can get a little bit tricky. So I would say, but I would say, you know, if I put in up to maybe three figures, it just depends. So I love figures. They really break up the page and they are, usually you can make them colorful and beautiful. Um, the next question is, is there a need to reference a figure? I would say if you are creating the figure by yourself, but you're inspired by another figure, like for example, that figure I made in PowerPoint, I was inspired by our, our um, COVID-19 paper. Um, I would probably reference the paper, but um, if you want to directly copy a, a figure from a paper, which I don't think you should try to do here, this is your independent proposal, you should be making all your figures. But if in the future you publish a paper where you want to cite somebody else's data, or, or your thesis, this is common in a thesis, you need to get copyright permission for that figure. Um, so I would say you can reference if you're inspired by a figure, but you should never copy and paste a figure. Great questions, guys. Okay, with that, we need to move on um, for, um, to Ed's section. So Ed, you can take it away. Uh, excellent, thank you. And my two, my two cents on how many figures per page, uh, to me, it's not really that critical as long as the description of the figure is actually happening on the same page. That's what you want to achieve. So with this, we're gonna switch over to ChemDraw, Adobe Illustrator, and Photoshop. So we'll mostly talk about Adobe, I'm um, sorry, ChemDraw, and briefly uh, Adobe Illustrator, and very, very briefly on the Photoshop. So uh, you know, in case if you don't have access to ChemDraw, you should get one. So uh, this presentation is uploaded on the uh, Canvas. So make sure to find this presentation under today's lecture, follow this link, and install ChemDraw on your computer. You have to have it, you're a chemist. Uh, that's all I can say. So this uh, slide provides you the web address, how to get there, and the instructions on how to make it happen. In case if you have difficulties, uh, email to Nestor Campo, and he will help you out, CC to me. Uh, so uh, there are quite a few tutorials available. Uh, I found these two, which are kind of useful because uh, they touch base on a few key points, uh, and I find them quite helpful. So, and there is gazillions of other tutorials available on the YouTube. So, uh, before, so we're not gonna obviously draw any, I'm sorry, not gonna watch any tutorials during today's lecture, but my goal here today is really to go through some of the basic features of ChemDraw. So this is how ChemDraw looks on my computer. So I'm gonna start a new file. I'm gonna go to file. Uh, oh, new document. I hope this is gonna work fine. And uh, the key point that I would like to mention here is make sure to specify what kind of file format you're gonna follow. So for example, here what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click apply document settings from, and I'm gonna choose, and what you should be always choosing is ACS document 1996. This makes it very aesthetically pleasing. That there is a whole bunch of settings associated with it. So what you see in my uh, on my page is 100% uh, view of the page. Uh, you can see the ruler, which shows you from zero to seven and a half inches. That's the whole width of the page, assuming one inch margins. Again, this is kind of the style of uh, ACS. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna take 200% uh, percent view. So here you have your tools. Uh, and again, I'm gonna go briefly over some of the key features here. Uh, and with these tools, you can draw various structures. So I'm gonna draw this, uh, uh, one single chemical bond. I'm gonna go to the heterocycle attach it here. I'm gonna intentionally attach it poorly. Uh, then I'm gonna attach a double bond there. Another uh, single bond here. Uh, and this kind of makes sense now. As you realize, the structure is not very aesthetically pleasing, but that's okay. Uh, uh, ChemDraw has fantastic set of tools. 
what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna choose this lasso tool. I'm gonna highlight the whole thing. Is that gonna work? No. I'm actually gonna use this tool better. So I'm gonna choose the entire thing. I'm gonna go to structure. And in case if your drawings are not uh, as unpretty as mine, you can go to, uh, to object and uh, you're gonna choose, uh, uh, you will choose structure, clean up structure feature. And that's gonna clean up your structure and makes it really nice. So that's, that's great. It really helps you out with, 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 with all kinds of things. Another cool feature here is obviously you can use all kinds of arrows to draw anything you like. So here I'm gonna choose uh, an arrow uh, pointing out that this will be a chemical reaction of some sort. I'm gonna copy uh, this structure, copy, and I'm actually gonna paste it. I'm not gonna draw anything else, but my goal here is to show you, let's say, you know, I align, I, I managed to put this structure here. So that's okay. As you see, these structures are not quite aesthetically pleasing because they're not aligned. So here I'm gonna use another cool tool. I'm gonna to select this structure. I'm gonna select that structure. And now I'm actually gonna use all uh, object aligning tools. So you can go to our object align and choose all kinds of different alignments. Obviously I do want to align them uh, at the bottom edge or upper edge. And now my two structures are gonna be perfectly aligned. So. This is a very powerful tool suit. It allows you to draw all kinds of structures. Uh, besides that, it, it's, it's, I mean, I cannot overemphasize what kind of other cool things you can do. So uh, let me uh, select uh, a chemical bond here. Let me actually select this chemical bond. And actually, uh, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the color of this chemical bond. So there is a whole tool set to be able to change the colors, uh, to be able to change the type of the text whenever you're gonna be drawing a text. So let's say for example here, I want to draw hydrogen and it's gonna show up as a hydrogen. So in addition to that, I, I would like to select this hydrogen now with this uh, tool for fonts. And now this panel is gonna become active. I'm gonna choose bold because I would like to make this hydrogen bold. Uh, here you have full control of the font type, font size, so on and so forth. Uh, but here for the purpose of the educational task, I'm actually gonna choose blue color and it's gonna come up with a nice blue color. So uh, there is a whole bunch of other features. Uh, and uh, the, one of the things that Mary Kay was referring to uh, is uh, this interesting uh, feature, which allows you to draw all kinds of uh, antibody things. So I'm gonna draw uh, a receptor here of some sort uh, and I'm actually gonna use it uh, as for one of the uh, next exercise a little bit later. So on the Kendra, I'm actually gonna stop here. I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so, but hopefully this provides you with the overall overview of what kind of tools and features uh, Kendra can offer. You can draw almost any kind of structure, whether it's chemical or bio tools. Uh, and what I would like to briefly mention uh, are some of the uh, to do things and not to do things. So in case if you're trying to draw a structure and in case if you're trying to emphasize a certain point or certain part of your structure, what you can do here is, for example, you can use bold text and enhanced font size to bring attention to the elements within your structure. So do you see these uh, two different structures on the left and on the right? So what you can do, what, what was done on the right, uh, the font size here was made bold and the key elements which were, uh, which were which the author really wanted to emphasize here, they were made bold to emphasize. Moreover, the center part of this catalyst center or metal center was really enhanced in the font size. Um, on this um, uh, figure here, very complex diagrams, uh, but you know, the to do thing here is, uh, as you can see, these two arrows pointing to the left from this structure and to the right of this structure are perfectly aligned. Here, these arrows are not exactly aligned and the agents are not very well aligned. So make sure to use those alignment tools to, to make very nice and aesthetically pleasing uh, diagrams and structures. You can totally do it. Uh, some other takeaway points here. So here you can see two different uh, set of reactions, exactly the same reaction. But what happens here is uh, in the upper case, uh, you see the uh, reagent product and uh, the list of the conditions. 
employed for this chemical reaction, and not the font size, I'm sorry, the font type being used. So the, there is uh, no difference in the font uh, type. Here, for some reason, the author is changing to the uh, um, Times New Roman, which doesn't really look great. So try to be consistent within your structures, try to use similar or preferably identical fonts. So uh, another uh, takeaway, for example, point uh, here, as you see from two of these structures, is what you see on the left is a nicely drawn structure, and what you see on the right is also kind of a really uh, nicely drawn structure. But what you notice here is you have a power to actually change the ring uh, sizes. And I'm not sure if this, if this is helpful here. Uh, in some cases, it could be helpful, but in this particular case, to me, this is not exactly productive because you don't, you're not conveying the size of the, uh, of the molecule. So with this, I'd like to switch to uh, Adobe uh, Creative uh, Cloud. So Adobe has multiple different products. The product that you're probably the most familiar with is Adobe uh, uh, Acrobat Reader. Uh, Adobe has many, many other uh, products. And uh, two of these products that uh, I'd like to use quite a lot uh, is Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop is not exactly uh, fantastic for the type of the stuff that you will be doing with science. It's really designed primarily for figure, for, for uh, all kinds of photos and really manipulating with different layers using graphical elements. Illustrator, on the other hand, employs all kind of very powerful vector graphics in order to be able to design layers uh, and uh, in order to be able to manipulate with layers. Adobe Illustrator is compatible with a whole bunch of other applications. You can import, export, export things. And to me, uh, Adobe Illustrator is more like a hub for all kinds of things that I can bring from, for example, uh, uh, CamDraw, Word, uh, you name it. You can bring all of these elements and you can make some really nice uh, pictures. You can bring your photographs in Adobe Illustrator just as well and uh, merge and combine them. So Adobe products are available through Wayne State University at discounted price. They're not exactly free, but Adobe provides one week free trial for all Creative Cloud products. Uh, so follow this link to figure it out. Unfortunately, I cannot log in as a student, so I cannot see what kind of discounts you will be eligible to. I did look through the discounts available for the uh, for the report for the departments, and there are actually quite quite significant discounts for this software, which is available on the uh, on the subscription basis. Uh, again, I would encourage, in case if you're interested in learning how the Illustrator works, I would encourage you to go through this. Uh, tutorials which are available on YouTube. They're very short, but they're quite powerful because they really help you uh, to uh, learn how to use this really, really cool product. Uh, and it's not exactly uh, just the product for chemistry. So for example, the way I always view ChemDraw, it's the product which is designed for chemists. Adobe Illustrator is designed for all kinds of graphical uh, design things. So with this, I'd like to do a very quick overview of the Illustrator uh, myself. So here you can kind of see a very similar uh, layout of tools uh, in the sense that it's similar to the layout of ChemDraw, but it's somewhat different. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here, uh, here, here are my tools. Uh, I'm actually gonna try to draw uh, some sort of uh, a structure which is related to viral structure. So here I'm going to click on the ellipse tool and I'm going to create an ellipse. Hopefully. Uh, it, allows, it allows me to specify the dimensions. Uh, something should happen now. There we go. So it came up with some of the presets which I've been using before. So it came up with, with this color. So now I will also choose the polygon tool here which allows me to, oops, that's not what I wanted. Just give me a second, hopefully it will light up. Uh, unfortunately, when I use uh, all kind of uh, software for telecommunication, all of my applications somehow slow down. So here I'm gonna choose three sides. I'm gonna use this small radius uh, and uh, I'll try to make use out of it. So it should draw a triangle. So here I'm gonna change the color of this triangle using this color tool. And as you see, the, my colors are changing now. So I want to make it different. 
from the ones that I've been using. Uh, boy, this is really slow. I'm going to type zero here. So there are quite, uh, there are all kinds of features available here to change, to, to modify the, um, the font colors. Uh, and I'm not, actually what I'm going to do here, I'm going to switch completely to red. I'm going to modify uh, what's, what's happening here on the red channel. Boy, this is really not copyrighted. Um, all right, in any case, I got my uh, red color. What I can do here with objects, I can obviously uh, manipulate with them. I can uh, transform, uh, perform rotations. Uh, and I'm just going to give you a few examples of what can be done. So let's say in this particular case, I want to rotate an object by 60 degrees uh, in order to be able to align it with the structure that I'm working with. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is working out very, very slowly, but I'll show you what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> so what I was doing before today's lecture is I was trying to use some of these features that I was using from CamDraw. And here is our receptor, if you, if you remember that I was drawing. So I'm gonna copy this receptor structure and I'm gonna paste it in the Illustrator. So here I'm moving things from one software environment into a different software environment to be able to manipulate with all kinds of features of this, uh, uh, of this drawing. So I'm trying to paste uh, this feature. And there we go. Uh, it's really, really slow and really, really inconvenient. So I'm gonna move it over here. Uh, so what you have here in the Illustrator, you have a whole bunch of other tools. So for example, as you may notice, uh, in case when I was importing this object, I ended up with, uh, with an object having very thick lines. And here I have a tool to be able to change the stroke size. So you, in Illustrator, you have nearly complete control of uh, many, many features. Uh, you can do all kinds of smart layers. So what I was doing here, I draw a circle using the circle um, tool or ellipse tool. I entered uh, the text coronavirus and I placed it in the center of this sphere. What I did in addition to that, as you may see, is I created triangles and uh, I added a line from the line tool here, as you can see. And uh, I, made, I made it as a very thick line. And as a result of that, I assigned it exa exactly the same color. So in both of these cases, uh, I had a red color. I merged these two, docu uh, these two objects together and then I brought it closer to the uh, coronavirus particle, so to speak. So here, you know, you can take your, your imagination to any level you like. You can also use the same uh, tools for aligning things. So uh, I'm sorry that this runs really, really painfully slow. Uh, but the point that I was trying to make here is, let's say I have this text. Uh, which I typed in in the Illustrator. Oh, this is the whole thing. I'm sorry. I already created, uh, I already grouped them. I'm sorry. So here what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to ungroup it, uh, move it uh, over intentionally. Let's say to here. This is really, really painfully slow. But now I, let's say I want to bring it back and I want to be able to align it. So I will, I will select this text. I will select that text with the mouse. Now both of these elements are selected. Oh, and this one is group two. Um, I'm gonna ungroup it just for the sake of the demo. Oh boy. There we go. Select that piece of the text, select the original piece of the text. And now I will, uh, now what I should be able to see, I should be able to see my alignment tools here, which I'm not seeing. That's, oh, never mind. There they are. So I will use this type of an alignment to be able to align both elements to the top. And when I click that, when I click that, both elements should align. And this is not happening. Uh, 
Okay, there they are. It just takes a while. Uh, and then I can move the displays around using an arrows and put them wherever I need to. So what I did here, I, I, I drew another sphere. I added a feature which I imported from um, uh, Chem Draw, although I could just draw a letter, for example, Y, similar to what, for example, Mary Kay was suggesting. And then I put functionalized paramagnetic nanoparticle uh, underneath. Uh, the structure explain what we are trying to do. And then uh, in the final uh, kind of a product, uh, I drew our coronavirus interacting with the uh, functionalized nanoparticle. And here I'm trying to make a point that once this binding happens, the relaxation property or relaxation time of surrounding water molecules is changing. So first, what we're doing, we're trying to emphasize that there is a binding happening. And the second part that we're trying to emphasize here is that uh, it, in this process, the relaxation properties of the water around this coronavirus is changing. So to me, the key strength of, uh, for example, Illustrator compared to uh, uh, other software packages uh, is there is a complete control of what you, of what you can do. There is a nice color palette. There is, uh, there is, there is a whole bunch of layering tools. Uh, you can go to Windows and uh, Window, and once this is going to open, you will see that there are, uh, that there are additional uh, uh, features here. So what I can also do, I can also click on View, and I can, this is really not, and I can click on Show Rulers, and then my rulers, ruler, ru rulers are going to show up. And uh, in addition to that, I can also uh, show uh, Artboard Rulers and view, show transparency grid. This way you can see the alignment of the elements. So in case if, for example, so if some of my elements are not transparent, I will know that. So for example, in case if I'm using some sort of a uh, drawing or an illustration uh, or something else, I will see what is transparent and what is not transparent. Why is that important in case if you're trying to put this image uh, someplace else and overlay it with something, this may become handy. So I'm going to stop here uh, with the Illustrator. Uh, I'm going to put this uh, um, this figure, which I've created using Illustrator for the purpose of our uh, uh, grant proposal example or demo uh, on the um, Canvas website. So uh, it will be available. Uh, it took me about 45 minutes to make this figure happen. So it does take an effort to make this figure, but then you have complete control of an elements in case if you're trying to develop your idea further, it takes significantly less effort. The same goes for the chem draw. Once you made these professional diagrams, you can modify them, you can build on them, you can go back and correct errors, add additional features. If you've got some critique, you can improve on them. So I'm gonna switch back to, um, uh, to my presentation. So uh, in the end of the presentation, I would, all, I would like to briefly mention Adobe Photoshop. It may not necessarily be super useful in the context of uh, this class, but I would still like to bring, to, I would still would like to draw your attention to Adobe Photoshop product because it really allows manipul fancy manipulation with images in case if you're trying to prepare some uh, high quality uh, graphics in order to be able to manipulate. So in case if you're interested in using this program, uh, try to download the demo, see how it works. Uh, here are some um, uh, tools that uh, you can watch as a tutorial. In my case, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, go to my Adobe Photoshop uh, program and I'm gonna show you some of the examples of some of the manipulations that you can make using Adobe Photoshop. So give me uh, a second. Uh, my Photoshop is loading up. It takes a while apparently. Trust me, if I'm not, doing this kind of communication, it works about, I don't know, 50 times faster. So here you have a graphics uh, which has been designed, designed for, uh, for a publication. It has gazillions of different layers. So it, it looks aesthetically pleasing. It has been designed from scratch from many different elements. Uh, the, features that I, the, the features that you see in here is you see a conventional menu, you have uh, control of layers, image, images, so on and so forth. So the way we try to think about, for example, Chem Draw, uh, Illustrator, um, 
Adobe, uh, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, we're thinking in terms of the sizes, in terms of the inches. Here in um, Photoshop, we're always thinking in terms of pixels. Uh, here, the graphics is pixelated, uh, and that's that's the, that's that's the whole uh, features. Uh, so I'm, what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to zoom in quite extensively. This way, you actually can see that there are some pixels associated with graphics. This is not vector graphics, such as, for example, in Adobe Illustrator. So what I hope you start seeing is you, you can start seeing the pixelation. What I'd like to do here uh, in a few brief moments is, excuse me, why this is not working? There we go. I would like to zoom out. Uh, and the thing that I'd like to point out here is uh, what you see on this figure is you actually see quite a few different layers. This is not a single uh, layer graphics. Oh boy. Of course, now, now it repeats all of the things that I've actually done to this, uh, to this file. It tries to zoom out when I was uh, zooming out because I thought it was not uh, reacting to what I was doing. 